Chenille remains a popular technique for specialist embroidery houses with the right equipment. Some machines are capable of automatic colour changes and trims. Some are also capable of automatic chenille needle height control for different depths of pile. With combination machines, patches and emblems often combine moss and chain stitch with standard lock stitch embroidery. Automation has made this type of work simpler and cheaper to produce. Embroidery Studio's chenille capabilities make it possible to exploit modern machines to the maximum of their commercial potential and appeal to both popular as well as custom apparel and fashion markets. In Embroidery Studio, you use a single design workspace for both chenille and standard lock stitch embroidery. The chenille element provides a dedicated chenille toolbar with chenille specific stitch types and machine functions and an object properties tab for compound chenille objects. Embroidery Studio provides a number of stitch patterns typically associated with chenille work, square, double square, coil and island coil. When you start Embroidery Studio, Design 1 is based on the default normal template. Use the chenille template for new chenille designs. Select a format for the target machine. Explicit support is provided for various Tajima, Barudin, Melko, ZSK and Dahau machine types, both chenille and combination machines. Depending on your machine model, you may need to adjust settings. You can create a new format based on an original. Digitizing for chenille is easier than regular lock stitch embroidery. In general, shapes are filled more simply and registration tolerances are broader. Chenille designs need to employ simple, clear shapes, which can be easily converted to chenille stitch blocks. It's important to map out a design, as you would regular embroidery, to minimize jumps. Chenille stitching is thicker than the lines in your digitized design. For instance, chain stitching appears on screen like a regular run stitch. You need to recognize and compensate for this. Chenille is mostly digitized with complex fill in combination with compound chenille to create objects, even narrow ones, with built-in chain or moss borders. These hold the fabric in place and provide edge definition. Moss fills are often tied off with a chain stitch border. However, a sticky fabric can be used to back chenille embroidery using a heat and press method. Using this process, Moss fill does not require a chain border. Compound chenille fills may in fact be sandwiched between one to three borders before or after the fill. The bigger the object, the more borders can be added. Depending on the number of borders, adjust the fill offset to increase the gap between digitized boundary and fill area. Moss stitch, by its nature, is designed to provide dense cover. In Stitch Out, you should see only the fluffy moss and not the underlying stitch pattern. If you are able to see the fabric beneath the tufts, pattern density should be increased. In practice, while stitch angle has no effect on coil fill patterns, it can affect the appearance of square fill patterns. The best angles are 30 degrees or 120. Chain can be used to create flatter fills. But because chenille yarn is thicker than normal thread, it's critical to avoid yarn pile-up caused by overlapping stitches. Use open stitch patterns such as maize fill, offset fill or spiral fill. With chain fills, borders are optional. To add single line borders, you typically use run with chain stitching. Chenille run stitches are similar to lock stitch except that stitch length should be fixed, not variable. Other stitch types can be used if you have a combination machine capable of producing both chenille and regular stitching. The two basic stitch types created by all chenille machines, moss and chain, cannot be accurately represented in TrueView, only the underlying stitch patterns. Instead, 
you need to view them in a special viewing mode, which allows for identification of moss, chain and lock stitch embroidery. The design appears using only the first three palette colours, where colour 1 equals lock stitch elements, colour 2 chain elements and colour 3 moss elements. These colour slots should be reserved for display purposes only. To travel by machine function, click or right click the travel by function tool. Alternatively, press Ctrl plus page up or Ctrl plus page down. Use in conjunction with the stitch list to check moss and chain machine functions. While examining your design, note the following. Chenille always starts with a chain code. A moss code must be present at the start of any moss section. The moss section must conclude with a chain code. When continuing after a colour change or trim, no additional function code is required. The new block will follow on with the same chain code as the previous. To conclude the chenille section of a design, a chenille off code must be present. In TBF format, this is equivalent to a lock stitch code. After a chenille off or lock stitch code is encountered, the machine heads switch from chenille to lock stitch. Do a test run on the machine using default settings. Problems to look out for. Stitch density. When stitches are too thick, wrinkles may appear. Too many stitches may cause a knotted jumble. With moss stitching, lumps may appear if stitch density is too tight. Borders. Always allow enough space between shapes and their borders. If the chain stitching is too close, fills will poke through underneath. When using chain fills, set a reasonable stitch spacing to allow for yarn width. Too tight and you will end up with bunching. Too loose and you will see gaps appearing. Make all your adjustments to density settings, needle heights and stitch spacing and test again. The chenille element includes dedicated chenille fonts. By their nature, however, chenille fonts are digitized for relatively large applications. Anywhere between 2 inches or 50 millimeters and 6 inches or 150 millimeters. Chenille fonts can be used like regular fonts, except that they must employ the as digitized join method. They're tagged with the prefix ch. Some are digitized with coil fill, others with double square. If you break chenille lettering apart, each letter is a compound chenille object with a single chain and two moss offsets before the moss fill. If you check the stitch list, you will see again that each letter is stitched with its own chain and moss stitching. For additional embellishment, you can generate other offsets around the entire object. While chenille designs are saved to native EMB format, this cannot be read by machine. You can, however, export machine files to USB or even embroidery disk. There is no chenille specific machine file format as such. On output, Embroidery Studio will translate chenille stitch types, moss and chain, into machine codes that can be interpreted by the machine. Each machine requires its own machine file format. Typically, Tajima DST is used for pure chenille machines. Tajima TBF is for combination chenille and normal embroidery, including sequin. See the chenille supplement and your machine manual for details. Upon export, machine head assignments are automatically encoded in the machine file. The production worksheet provides important information. The machine operator must set chain or moss for each color change, according to the stop sequence displayed here. For more information about digitizing for chenille, refer to the latest Embroidery Studio chenille supplement.